Welcome to section 2.6. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and talk about the atom just a little bit more. So in the last lecture, you saw that atoms were these basic building blocks of our chemical compounds. And so a hydrogen atom is going to have the same properties as another hydrogen atom. So we can go ahead and describe a little bit more about the subatomic particles, the electron, the proton, and the neutron. The first thing I want to do is introduce a unit of measurement, and that's going to be called the atomic mass unit. Now, officially, the abbreviation for the atomic mass unit is U. However, a lot of people, including your book, use an antiquated abbreviation, AMU. So these are both the same thing. Now, an atomic mass unit is if we take carbon and a particular version of carbon, a carbon with six protons and six neutrons, and if I were to weigh that carbon and divide it by 12, that is how the atomic mass unit is described. So if I go ahead and look at the mass of my subatomic particles, what you'll see is a proton weighs about an atomic mass unit. The neutron is slightly heavier, just really slightly, but basically the same. It is about an atomic mass unit, and the electron is about 0 0.0005 atomic mass units. And so what this should clue you into is the electron makes up very little mass in my atom. Again, to reiterate, the atom is mostly empty space. Most of the weight is due to the protons and neutrons in the nucleus at the center of the atom. All right, general people, go ahead and take a look at this list and tell me, is each one of these that I've listed here an element or a compound? Now, once you've done this, simply mark the right answer on your quiz. All right, what you guys will see is the ones in green are what we consider elements. And so the definition of an element is it has to be made out of one kind of atom. Things that are considered compounds have to be made by two different types of atoms. So to explain this a little bit further, let's take a look at the categorization of matter. So I already told you about the first split, and that is a mixture versus a pure substance. A pure substance has a fixed composition. Now, a pure substance can either be an element or a compound. Elements are made out of one type of atom. We can further categorize elements into two classes, atomic and molecular. So an example of an atomic element is neon. Neon is a noble gas, and so I just have one atom of neon flying around. Since it's only made out of one type of atom, it's considered an element. Now, oxygen gas is considered a molecule, and it is given this formula O2. A molecule is made out of two atoms. So I have an oxygen atom and an oxygen atom. So both of these oxygen atoms are stuck together, but since I only have one type of atom, it is still considered an element. And so this is a molecular element. Now going back, a compound is made out of different types of atoms. So I can have molecular and ionic, and we'll describe these a little bit more in depth later. But what you guys can see is that H2O is made out of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. NaCl is made out of sodium and chloride atoms. So two different atoms are coming together to form this, and that's why I call it a compound. So on this last slide, I want you guys to do me a favor. I think it's a really good idea that you memorize the seven diatomic elements on the periodic table. These pop up a lot in chemistry, and it's good to know that the elemental form of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are diatomic molecules, meaning they exist with two of these atoms stuck together. This is their standard state. Now, you guys don't have to memorize the states if you don't want to. Now, an easy way to memorize the seven diatomics is if you look on the periodic table, you start from nitrogen, go to oxygen, fluorine, 
and you go all the way down to iodine, it makes a little seven on the periodic table for the seven diatomics. The only one you also have to consider is hydrogen, which is usually on the left-hand side of my periodic table. Okay, Chem 1A, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe.